really big flooded. Big, no, really big. Can you bring it? Wait, 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 wait. Quick, you're kidding. <laughs> That is that the is biggest flathead I have ever seen. Look at the girth. New PB. 94. Oh yeah. Oi Pat. <gasps> it's big, it's big, it's big. It's big, it's big. Oh my, I can see it. Really big. Really big, I watched it eat it. Bro, that's a monster. Oh my, I can't lift it, it's so fat. Oh. <gasps> Bro. That's the biggest flatty I've ever seen in my whole life. How's this for a lizard? 88 or 89. 89. Oh. 89 centimeters, there's that head. G'day everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about big flathead. I've had constant messages on Instagram and especially the YouTube comment section asking me how I catch big flathead, the lures I use, the gear, the location, and that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. Everything you need to know from top to bottom on how to catch big dusky flathead. Also, before the video starts, just wanted to say I've been on lures for roughly a year and a half. So I'm not a professional, much so an amateur. But I know a thing or two when it comes to catching big dusky flathead. So let's get into it and hope you enjoy. Alrighty, well starting things off, I reckon we talk about lures. The gear, the time of day, the weather and everything is going to be important. But these right here is what you're actually going to be catching the fish on. So I'm going to be going over soft plastics and hard bodies. So let's start it off with soft plastics. When you walk into a tackle shop today, it can get pretty overwhelming and you don't know what to pick when it comes to Big Flooded because there's just so, so much on the market. So I made things a little bit easier for you and I'm gonna be running over my soft plastics that have caught me fish and I know work. It's a pretty controversial topic when talking about what lures to use for big flathead. Some people catch them on lures this size and some people catch them on lures this size. The thing is, flathead are up on the sand flat or wherever you're fishing, the drop offs, the weed edges, the rock walls, they're up there for that one big meal. You don't wanna be chucking around your tiny little soft plastic in hope that you somehow hook one you really want to be going with the bigger baits in hope that they'll take them. I feel like those little soft plastics, it all comes down to luck, but with these, you're directly targeting the big ones. I also forgot to mention, when I'm talking about big flathead, I'm talking about flathead 65 centimeters and up. The real big girls, the real big breeders, that trophy fish that everyone's chasing. So probably the smallest lures that I would go with when targeting these big fish are your 100 mil. I like to use these squidgy biotuff, squidgy fish, I think it's called, in the bloodworm color. This is probably my favorite for flooded. And your four inch Berkeley Power Bait Hollow Belly. Super cool, very natural looking as you can see. Your next range of lures that's gonna come in after those smaller ones for that little bit bigger fish is your five inch plastics. This is just the five inch Berkeley Hollow Belly. It's literally just a really nice fish profile. Five inches gets the job done. Here's another one that I haven't caught on yet, but I know this is gonna be an absolute gun. And I'm definitely keen to try it out on the big girls. That five inch Z-Man scented paddler. Now I personally haven't caught on these next lures, but I know a lot of anglers that have. I just don't have the gear to be throwing this around. Just these big Pro Lure 130 mil fishtail. Now if you've got the heavier gear, you can even go crazier and step up to something like this. Just a huge paddle tail. You look at this lure and you're probably thinking, Josh, that is huge. That's not gonna catch a flathead, that's gonna catch a blue marlin. You're wrong. This is actually flathead candy. This is the perfect size for anywhere chasing your 90 centimeters to a meter flathead. Just a really big mullet profile. Cool lure. I'm keen to use this out in summer on some big tackle. Now we've moved on to hard body lures and I've got three very special lures with me right here. This one actually caught my first ever big flathead going 81 centimeters. I'll obviously put up photos on the screen as I go. Bass Day Sugar Pen, 120 millimeter. I actually use that for whiting as well. This is my biggest flathead, 94 centimeters off the beach. This is a Daiwa 
95 millimeter double clutch. Now this lure right here is pretty special to me. It's a 90 millimeter Bastet Sugar D in the color black and gold. And this actually caught me an 89 centimeter flathead and that video did really well. I think it's at 15 to 16K views on my channel. So that one's pretty close to heart and pretty special. I would go over retrievals in this video, but I think it would take way too long. So I'm gonna leave two cards up the top here if you wanna watch videos that I've made in the past of how to use these lures. There's also gonna be a fair few things that I miss in this video. So if you wanna know any more information, comment below and I'll be sure to reply back. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is the tackle to catching these fish. Rod, reel, leader, braid. That's what I'm gonna be going over. So let me grab my setup and we'll go over that now. I'm going to start off by talking about what reel I use. I use a 2500 Shimano Banford spinning reel. Super light, very nice in the hands, and it can handle big flathead like a dream. You'd think for fishing for big flathead, you need the big heavy duty, you're this and you're that. Little spinning reel, just like this, gets the job done really nicely. This is the rod that I've been using for a while on big flathead now. It's actually my main rod, which I use for brim, pretty much everything. It's a two to five pound, seven foot, Shimano Zodius rod. It's really, really light in the hand, super comfortable. I can flip that all day long and have no worries. Also, this is gear that I use, which works for me. There's a whole bunch of other gear which work for a whole bunch of other people. This is just what I use. Obviously, you can use rods that are smaller, you can use rods that are bigger, they're still gonna get the job done. I just like that light finesse stuff and it seems to hold up to the big fish absolutely fine. Next thing I'm gonna be talking about is this little orange thing on my reel called braid. Now, when you're fishing lures, you really want to be fishing braid to leader, and I use a fluorocarbon leader, which we'll go into very shortly. This is 8 pound Shimano Kariki 4 carrier braid. There's plenty of braids out there on the market. You've got Daiwa J braid, you've got Sunline, you've got Platypus braid. There's a whole bunch of others, but this is what I use, and it gets the job done for me just fine. Haven't had a single issue, so I don't see why I should change it. Now, we're going to talk about what your braid connects to, and this is fluorocarbon leader and I've got quite a lot of it here. My go-to for flicking for flathead if I was just regular flathead fishing in general. My camera can focus. Thank you mate. 10 pound. 10 pound FC Rock. Definitely one of the best leaders that I've ever used. Now when we're talking about just stepping it up I like to use 12 or 14 pound. This is all I will fish for soft plastics and hard bodies. I know a lot of other blokes that fish 20 pound litre and also go up to your 30 and sometimes 40 pound litre. That's pretty crazy, but those guys are doing that as a confidence thing. You don't really want to have a big flat and take your lure all the way down and get snapped off, which I understand. I haven't been snapped off just yet. The day that I get snapped off to a really big flat is the day that I'll upgrade to really heavy litre. But till then, I'm just gonna stick with my 12, 10 and 14. I'm not going to beat around the bush. My favourite place to fish for big flathead would 100% have to be sand flats and there's a lot of people out there that can agree with me. Anywhere from one foot to four foot is super super fun for targeting these big fish and in summer they absolutely love sitting up on the flats. Now when I'm talking sand flat I'm not necessarily talking about a place that's just big open flat pure sand. I'm talking about an area with yabby holes, weed beds, little rocks here and there. Plenty of structure for flathead to sit behind and wait for bait coming by. 100% Sand flats, definitely my favorite. Now I'm gonna move on to a couple of other spots that are also great for holding big flathead. Big drop-offs, they love drop-offs. If you can imagine, this is the uprise and this is the sand flat. Flathead will sit right on the edge here, waiting for bait to come off that flat down into the deep water, and that's where they'll ambush. You'll catch a lot of your big flathead right, right on that edge. Now another spot's rock walls and like rock barry kind of things where you've got just rocks declining down into the deep. Your flathead will be sitting down at the bottom there waiting for brim, little bait fish and mullet to swim past. The locations such as your rock walls and your declining edges are really really good when you're fishing in a boat or a kayak but land based I really like to fish those sand flat or mud flats and a mud flat is basically the same thing as a sand flat instead of sand it's a muddy bottom so yeah. Moving on to the next topic we're going to be talking about tides and weather. For me personally I don't think there's a perfect perfect condition for targeting big flathead. I've caught them on super overcast days, I've caught them on rainy days, crystal clear days. I've caught them on pretty much every condition possible and I don't think weather is a huge, huge factor. 
the tides definitely is. So I'll talk about that right now. Now when it comes to talking about tide, the thing that you really want if you're fishing a sand flat, a drop off, a rock ledge, you want current. You really want movement in that system. So therefore, you're gonna want the run in or the run out, the only two tides. My favorite times to target big flatted is on the run in, especially on the sand flats. That water is freshly coming up onto the shallow flats and the big, big flatted are able to push up and wait for bait fish to push up as well. Another really good thing to look for when you're targeting big flatted on the sand flats is look for flatted lays. I'll put a thing up on the screen right now and all it is is just a mark where the flatted sit in the sand grabbed its meal, taken off, and it will actually leave a mark, which is a really, really good sign to having big flooded in your area. It's always nice to have that little bit of extra evidence. I basically judge my flooded fishing off two tides, that run in that we just talked about, and the last couple of hours, last two to three hours of the run out. It's the same concept with the run in, except the bait will be coming up off the flat, and you'll find the flatter will actually turn direction, facing whichever way the current is. So if the current is coming this way, you wanna be chucking your lure up current and bringing it down with it as the flooded are gonna be facing in that direction, waiting for bait. That's pretty much all I have to say. I hope you found this video helpful in some way and you're able to take in some information. Like I said, this is just all my personal experience. I'm an amateur, I've only been on lures for a year and a half, so I'm just telling you what I've learned. I'm pretty dodgy at standing here talking to the camera as well, so hopefully that wasn't too bad. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm gonna chuck my Instagram up on the screen here if you wanna go check it out. I've also got some big flooded photos up on there. If you have anything else that you wanna know, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll reply back to you. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy fishing, tight lines.